DC Multiverse! How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are back at the review bench, this time with the entire Collect to Build Merciless Wave. We are going to open up this entire wave of figures in order of build a figure piece. So we're going to start with the Crow Robin, and then we're going to move on to Batman, and then the Sky Tyrant Batman who laughs, and then finishing it off with the infected Superman. Now, if you'll just give me a moment to yoink all these bad boys out of the package, we'll continue on with the review with them all set up in front of us. And just like that, through the magic of editing, they're all out of their boxes waiting for us to take a closer gander at them and my 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 what a fantastic looking spread let's take a look at them all a little bit closer starting with robin from earth negative 22 so starting off with the robin figure we can see that he came with this piece of the Collect and Connect Merciless figure, this torso is huge. And I just can't wait to put this thing together because it looks fantastic. And of course we have the Robin figure, the trading card, and his little chain accessory right here. Oh yeah, and the figure stand, which I'm not gonna mention anymore in this video because we've seen these a million times before. The front of the trading card looks exactly like the picture on the back of the box, while the back of the trading card has this little data file. You could pause to read that if you'd like to. If not, we're gonna move on to the figure, who as far as I'm concerned, looks absolutely Absolutely fantastic. And before we get into that toe to head where we really take a peek at this figure, the chain that Robin comes with attaches right here at his neck via a little clasp there. And it's actually really, really secure. It holds him on there really tightly. For the purpose of this review, I've removed the chain. That way it doesn't just dangle in the way during all the close up shots, which we'll start right now. And you can see he's got his green boots, the green gloves, he's got the uh, trunks, undies, whatever you call them. He's got his red shirt. The yellow belt, the R on the front, the little cape with the collar, and just the visual appearance of this Robin is actually something really cool. As for the head sculpt, this is the one that I got out of the three chase variants. I don't really have a preference for which one I like better. I mean, I think they're all pretty neat looking. I think that it's pretty well done, and I'll probably end up picking up other Robins just so that I can get at least three. The details of this figure look pretty fantastic. He's got a soft rubber cape that is not pre-posed off to the side. I like a rubber cape sometimes, as long as it's not off to the side like Batgirls and, and Batmans is in this line. And I really can appreciate all of the fine intricacies like the sew lines on his sleeve here, the little messy looking clasps that go down the front of his tunic. His trunks here, they're actually a softer kind of a rubber. They actually fit over top. And I really like these little booties. They look so creepy and goblin-like. And I like how the texture of his skin is all gnarly and nasty. Like he really does look like a little goblin of a robin, a little crow robin. Blech. When it comes to the articulation though, this guy is very sadly lacking. I mean, yes, the head is on a ball peg and it's, you know, it's pretty articulate. The shoulders are on those rounded hinges and, and even they're pretty articulate. The tunic is a soft rubber, so it actually gets out of the way. Little Robin has single jointed elbows, but they crunch up enough to keep me happy. And deep inside that glove, he does have a ball joint. And the glove might look like it gets in the way a lot. and. It kind of does, but it certainly gives more articulation than I thought it was going to. And to finish it off, he's also got a bicep swivel. But the, the, the arms and head articulation is not where this guy's lacking. He does have articulation in the torso as well that is surprisingly well concealed by his rubber tunic. That is actually really, really well articulated in the waist and the torso even though he has that tunic. I really like this a lot. It's from the waist all the way down to the knees where the articulation begins to drop off a little bit. Like, yes, I mean, he does have those really great articulation points, and in theory, it's highly articulated, but the rubber trunks do get in the way and try to pose him in anything like that, and the trunks just want to pull his legs back. So there's that. And then also, he can't straighten his legs out at all. The legs are always kind of bent. I feel like this is a figure that would have benefited from double jointed knees and he was only given single and as single jointed knees go they crunch up a lot but it's kind of cheating on the fact that they don't really straighten up in the first place so that you know I get it he's a crouchy figure but but I really just kind of wish they did double jointed knees here and yes there is thigh cut activity up there as well and then of course he's got the rounded hinges right here in the ankles so we know what they're gonna do and he's got articulation in the toes toe articulation is the articulation ideal Hell no. Nah. Is it super detrimental to the figure? No, n no. It's, it doesn't destroy the figure. 
It j just don't expect to get him into any really insane poses. <laughs> but you know me, this is just gonna go up on a shelf and look cool, so next. And next we have the Batman, who comes with both of the wickedly armored arms of the Merciless. And also, two battle axes, and a trading card. Batman's trading card has Capullo's fantastic artwork on it, and we can see why the figure actually comes with a battle damage look to him. Although, if they wanted to be comic accurate, there'd be blood on the axes and purple on the inside of the cape. For the back, we have the data profile, which you can feel free to pause to read as well if you'd like to. If not, then we'll move on to the figure, who looks really, really awesome. Just check out them battle axes. They're both sculpted really nicely, and I think that they are fantastic pack-ins. And as we look up close at this Batman, we can see that there is so much work that has been done as far as textural detail to the boots, gauntlets, the suit, the belt, the bat. It's a fantastic looking sculpt altogether. And the face really does kind of look like Capullo's artwork. And I really can't complain about any kind of paint slop or anything like that because mine looks nice and tidy. There is some shading on this figure, on the torso and on the biceps and on the inner thigh, on the armor there, which is kind of nice. And inside of the gnashes, there's some shading as well. I like how he has the bats on the knee pads and all this fantastic detailing right down the bottom on his boots. The bat on his chest has been inlaid right into the body. As usual, you can see battle damage right there on the front. And just all around, the details look really, really fantastic. This is a fantastic sculpt, although honestly, I would have preferred that they, if they went to, if they were going to forego the blood on his face and forego the purple on the inside of his torn up cape, then I really do kind of wish they had have foregone the battle damage on his uniform. I would have rather they just left the battle damage right off of this figure altogether. I mean, you'll see later they did leave off the damage to Superman's suit. In the source material, he has a big slice up the front. But that's not make or break for me. This is still a fantastic looking, bulky, weighty figure. But I will say, I am not a fan of this cape one bit. I realize what it's meant to be, but I just, I don't, I don't like it when they do stuff like this, honestly. As for this Batman's articulation, it's kind of funny in that the head is not actually on a ball peg. The articulation for Batman actually starts down at the bottom of his neck. I just, I've never seen McFarlane do that before. But other than that, this Batman really is standard fare for McFarlane's articulation. You got the rounded hinge with the rounded piece of plastic in there. You've got the bicep swivel. You've got a double jointed elbow on both sides, and also a rounded ball hinge that's been hidden by the gauntlet. Ooh, for once we can't see the ugly rounded hinge. Hooray! There's also articulation in the torso by way of a ball hinge, and that is really, really well articulated. And the same thing with the waist. So this is a very, very poseable figure. And then from the waist down, you have the McFarlane groin, which is a hingy do. You've got some articulation in the way of what would be a thigh cut. You've got your double jointed knees that crunch up about like that. And then you have your rounded ball hinges right there in the ankles. And finally, toe articulation. Man, I certainly wish we could go back in time and make the Detective Comics 1000 Batman figure as cool as this one. And next up, we have the Batman Who Laughs with the Sky Tyrant Wings. A very odd choice for a figure, considering this really wasn't a prominent piece of any of the Dark Knight's metal storyline. And actually, it would have just been cooler had they have made an actual Sky Tyrant figure to come with the merciless head, shoulder pauldrons, and sword. Which, by the way, all look... Absolutely fantastic. I love that helmet with bat wings on it. And these shoulder pauldrons? Dude, I can't wait to put this together. And of course, there's the big ol' sword. Heck yes! Here's a close-up look at the trading card that came with this figure. It's the cover to Hawkman issue 18. I think it was actually an alternate cover, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't recall anywhere in this comic book where the Sky Tyrant has his wings stolen by... I just, I don't recall this anywhere. Here's what the back of the card looks like with its bio. You can feel free to pause and read this if you'd like to. If not, we'll move on to the figure. Who looks absolutely fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Even though a Batman who laughs with Sky Tyrant Wings would not have been my choice for a figure, I would have just, like I said, 
preferred to make the actual Sky Tyrant, I will say that they captured the details of the source material quite wonderfully with this one. And they did give us an entirely new head sculpt. This one has an open mouth maniacal look rather than the closed gritty teeth maniacal look. Turning this guy around, you can see these wings are absolutely gorgeous as well. Look at those bad boys. They open right up. Each one of these wings is a beautifully sculpted work of art in itself. And while not a completely unique take on how to do Hawkman wings, they certainly bring their own flavor to the game, that's for sure. One thing of note for this figure, aside from the fact that the details look absolutely fantastic for it, is there seems to be a good mix of reused parts to newly sculpted parts. So the head, the hands, the entirety of the torso, the jacket, and the wings are all newly sculpted, while you look at the legs and the boots and his arms, those are all reused parts. The articulation for this guy, I mean, we've seen the wings, and the wings open right out. We know exactly what they can do, but the body itself, what can it do? Well, he does have articulation in the torso. There's a lot of rubber in the way, so don't expect a lot of posability in the body here. The head's on a ball peg, and it's also got articulation, if I'm not mistaken, down inside the bottom of the neck as well. The collar will get in the way, but it's not overall too terrible. Then you have the armpits, which are on those rounded hinges, but the shoulders, you know, this rubber will absolutely get in the way of that posability. But they went for form over function with this because, I mean, you want the shoulder pauldrons, so that's just kind of what you're stuck with. You've got the biceps, which are also on a swivel. You've got the double jointed elbows. You've got articulation here in the wrist by way of that rounded ball joint. You've got the groin here, which does the exact same as all the previous McFarland figures. His little rubber trench coat gets in the way not that much, to be honest. It's actually really easy to move this thing out of the way. There's also a little bit of motion like this, but it's really not that pronounced. As well as crunchy double-jointed knees, rounded hinge ankle articulation, and toe articulation. And then finally, we've got Infected Soups, probably the one that I was the most excited about out of all the four. Not only does he come with both of these fantastically sculpted legs for the Collect and Connect Build-A-Figure Merciless, but he also comes with two alternate hands. These weird fingery hands. And then we have the trading card, which is actually taken right out of the pages of Batman Superman number two. It's his first appearance as the infected Superman. Here's the data file on the back. Feel free to read that if you like. So this fantastic specimen of a Superman figure you can see before you really isn't a bad guy. He may look like he's been totally taken by the Batman who laughs toxin, but he was controlling himself the whole time. He just had to look the part, it had to be authentic, otherwise the Batman who laughs wouldn't have believed him. The details for this Superman figure are arguably much better than the previous version of Superman that McFarlane gave us. A lot of us are really digging this bigger, kind of bulkier, Superman-esque body type, and no doubt there will be customizers chomping at the bit to have this guy repainted in the classic blue and red rather than this light purple and reddish maroon. Because, I mean, it, it's a fantastic sculpt. This is their chance to actually release a better Superman figure than the previous one. And the previous one was pretty great, but this is an improvement. As usual, the S has been molded into the chest as a separate piece. This line work, these designs, they're not actually in the source material. That's something that Todd has added himself after the fact. And the belt and trunks area is basically just a reused set of trunks and belt from the first Superman, because it actually doesn't look like this in the source material either. And then you've got this cape, this tattered, torn up cape, and in this case, with the cape being kind of preposed, I'm actually okay with it, which is weird considering how much I complained about it with the Batman. I actually kind of feel like it does suit this version of Superman a lot. And it's a nice soft rubber too. It's it's not it's not hard at all. And the head sculpt for the Superman is just insane. No pun intended. It looks fantastic. It's painted well. It's sculpted really well. And I think that they just nailed the source material. This is a sinister looking infected Superman. Now the articulation for the Superman is really good. You'll find you won't have any problems getting him into a flight pose because for one, you've got the head that's on a ball peg and it actually does go back. That's quite far actually, considering it's not a hinge. It's just a ball peg. Then you've got 
the arms right here that are on those rounded hinges with that extra rounded bit of plastic in there to simulate a butterfly hinge. You've got a bicep swivel, you've got double jointed elbows, and my mind are those bad boys crunch up. You've got the rounded ugly hinge there with a fist on it, or an open fingery hand, whichever you prefer. And then you've got all this sweet articulation in the torso here. For one, you've got a rounded ball joint right up here in the torso, and you've got the articulation at the waist there. It's another ball jointed tornado waist. So getting him in a flight pose, you'll find is actually, that's pretty good. I mean, that's pretty natural looking. We could push that body all the way back and yeah, that's very good. From the waist down, you know he's gonna have that groin that McFarlane figures have. There's some rotative properties right there at the top. He's got the double jointed super knees. He's got a rounded hinge right here in the ankle as well as toe articulation. I love this figure very much, although I will say you could use these exact colors for a really rockin' bizarro figure. Now I'm just gonna skip the comparative portion of this video. Whatever pictures I do have their comparison shots, they'll be in the ending montage, so stick around if you wanna see them. And I'm gonna get right to putting together this merciless figure, because let's face it, this is the star of the show. All right, first leg. That is a tight, tight fit. Ugh. You'll notice that this whole system is a peg and hole. You just pop it in there, and it is very, very, very tight. I really gotta just jam it in there, but I think that's because they really don't want the figure falling apart. Arm number one. Ugh. Yeah, that is, that is really tight. And we're gonna do arm number uh, two. Again, nice and tight. I don't imagine that this figure is going to be coming apart anytime soon. And then we have pauldron number one and pauldron number two, just simple peg to hole. And then we have the final piece, the head of the Merciless. Ooh, that peg is tight. Woo! And of course, we'll give the Merciless his sword. And, ta-da! Oh man, he's, hold on a second, he's too big to fit in frame. And, oh my gosh, this guy is, is huge. This is, by far, the largest McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figure that he's ever offered. It's huge. The Devastator might be wider and more buff, but this one towers over the Devastator and is appropriately scaled when it comes to comparing him with, for example, the Batman Who Laughs and also the Murder Machine. Impressive. Impressive. Now let's look at this guy slowly from toe to head. My gosh. It, bravo. This is a fantastic Build-A-Figure. And I must say, as much as I was enjoying getting a Collect and Connect Batmobile, I'm definitely much more happy that he's decided to go the route of the figures. I honestly don't think that he will ever do the Collect and Connect Batmobile thing ever again. I feel like that's done. Man, I just love the details of this figure. What, what a beautiful, beautiful sculpt. This absolutely looks like it needs to be on the cover of a 1980s or perhaps late 70s heavy metal album because this is just so badass. This is one of the most badass things that's ever been badass in the history of badassness. I like how clean the Wonder Woman bat symbol right there is on his chest. That, that's nice. And look at that head sculpt. Look at it. I love these gauntlets too. These are sculpted to the nines. You can see the chain mail in there behind the spikes and all of his plate mail. This is just fantastic. The chains here, the little spike chains are kind of a soft rubber. Got that cool skull right there on the front of him. Got the loincloth hanging down. It's a soft rubber. You've got right here, those are the connecting points for his legs. Got all that plate mail. Big armored knee pads there look fantastic. Look at those shoes. Would you want to get a kick in the jimmy with those? Heck no. He's got the furry furry stuff in the back there with more of the loincloth and the chains that connect. More plate mail and, and chain mail here underneath. Dude, this is a figure to be reckoned with. The articulation for the Merciless. Heads on a ball peg. That big collar will get in the way somewhat. You've got the arms. We know what they're on. They're on the rounded hinge. You've got the little butterfly piece in here. you got a bicep swivel. These pauldrons, because they're on rounded ball pegs, they actually do not only move up and out of the way, but they can move back and forth, too. So, oh my gosh, we need to perform figure surgery. There's the circly bit. we got to put that, put it back in there. Woo! Put the arm. Woo! Ah, 
And here I was like, these arms look like they'll never come off. Super firm. Yeah. Not, yeah, I'm just going to force it in there again. It is actually really tight. I'm just, I got to put this, ah, oh, it happened again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe that is something you have to kind of keep an eye out for. It's because his armpit articulation, that rounded hinge, is really, really tight. Bicep swivel, single jointed elbows, or are they double? Ooh, well, there's there's rota there's an elbow joint here. Is it just the one? Okay, it is just the one, and that's what you're gonna get. That's all. It does rotate at the elbow here, which means, oh, I was incorrect. He does not have a bicep swivel. It rotates here, not at the bicep. It just looks deceptively like a bicep swivel, but it is in fact not. Great big rounded hinge. We know what that's going to do. Up and down, and it is really, really tight. Ugh. Get up. Get for a big bulky figure though he does have a lot of articulation in the torso for one he's got that ball joint in there and that is actually quite reasonable and uh, attach onto that the waist and you've got you know a very articulated figure from the waist up and then inside of the groin you got that typical McFarlane articulation and how much does the armor get in the way well actually not as much outside doing the splats, doing the spready, but like doing the splits and going forward and backwards, yeah, the armor does get in the way quite a bit. And then he's got a single jointed knee. Does it rotate? Yep. It does rotate and it's single jointed and that is as much as I can mash it up. And then he does have a rounded hinge right here and articulation in the tippy toe of his armored boot. And the armor on his ankles here, you can see, it's, I mean, it's going to get in the way somewhat. I mean, you can't have ankle armor without it getting in the way, but it's not too bad, actually. And then, of course, Wonder Bats here comes with a great big sword. I feel like it would be a massive, massive mistake to pick a fight with this version of Batman, because... Well, just look at them. All right, so now that we've opened up all four figures, we've had a good look at all of them, and we've put together the Merciless Collect and Connect figure, what do I think about all these guys? Are they worth the time and effort of money to go and track these guys down? Or should you just leave them on the store pegs or in your local online retailers because they're trash? Are they good or are they garbage? Well, if you've been paying attention all along, you'll probably have figured out by now that I'm actually really impressed by this wave of figures and I would give it a solid 9.5 out of 10. That's right, that's a really high mark and that is, that is my mark. That's what I honestly feel like this wave deserves. But anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you found this video to be an interesting, useful waste of time for the day. If you have, that'd be fantastic if you could slap a like on it, leave any comments you have down in the comments section below. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a super awesome DC day and take care.